Now, before starting the video, I would like to talk about the sponsor of this video, KeysFan. KeysFan.com offers cheap and legal OEM software keys in an easy way. You can activate software such as Windows and Microsoft Office in a fast and reliable way. With these keys that are 100% official and suitable for online activation, Moreover, they offer lifetime after-sales support in addition to 24 by 7 customer support. The Merry Christmas sale is live right now. Don't miss out Keys fans' incredible holiday discounts. If you are interested, you can check the links in the description. Add the product you need to your cart and catch 52% discount for Windows Series with RTG52 and 62% discount for Microsoft Office and Bundle with RTG62. Don't forget to check the description for details. What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, we'll be testing out the latest version of WinLater Glib C, which is the version 7.1.4, loaded with some new features and improvements. But before getting started, you'll need to uninstall or remove the previous version of this WinLater that you installed on your device. For those who aren't familiar with this emulator, it's actually the best performing one out there. All the other Windows emulators like WinLater Frost, CMOD and others are all based on this emulator by using its core. And as you guys can see, in this update they added new option for key binding. You can easily install add-ons using Content Manager. They improved the play button to load the container faster. Updated pause menu. Fixed box 64 RC import. Fixed direct draw games to full screen. Additionally, they made several improvements to open XR support. All right, now simply go to assets. Download and install the app package. This emulator also comes with the latest Turnip Driver version 25. Now I'll close this app. Open WinLater Glib C. Enable permission. Also, one more thing. Go to its app settings. To Battery Saver, set it to no restrictions for better performance. Now go to Contents section. Here you'll able to see that you can import contents like wine based on your preferred version. You can import turnip drivers, and currently there are no drivers for VRGL. You can also import DXVK Box64 contents, which means you can update all of these from here itself based on your preference. So simply, I'll choose Wine 9.2 custom version, which is currently the best stable version. Now continue. Same, let's also import the latest turnip driver version 25. All right. Content successfully got installed. Now let's head over to settings. Here box 64 is set to 0 0.3.0. Set preset to performance. Now save settings. Add new container. Set preferred resolution. Now here, you can select the wine version, which we installed 9.2. Select turnip driver version 25 we installed. Now let's select DXVK version to 2.4. Everything is same as usual. On Wine Configuration, set GPU to GTX 1070, also set Video Memory Size to Maximum. Now to Environment Variables, add new variable. Enable DXVK HUD if you want the FPS counter and stats. It's optional. Now to Advanced Section, set Startup Selection to Aggressive Mode. Processor Affinity is already set to all CPU cores. Now save the container. Now boot. So now if you press the back toggle, you'll notice a new change like the improved pause menu UI. Everything is same as usual, like you can access to keyboard, input controls and everything as before. Now let's head over to System Tools to test Direct3D. All right, it's perfectly fine. Means the driver's configured pretty well to this Adreno 735 chip. Also go to Wine Configuration. Set version to Windows 10. All right, now everything is set. Now it's time for the test. Now simply I'll create all these game shortcuts to the container because each of these games uses different configurations. Like for example, the RDR1 uses Vulkan D3D driver and DirectX 12 is selected because it won't run on DXVK and the turnip driver is set to 25. Now let's get into it. The graphics set to low preset. V-Sync is enabled for better stability. All right, we are getting better performance. Like there are some minor frame drops, possibly due to screen recording, but overall, it looks quite good to be honest. But if we set to even lower resolution, you can even expect more stable FPS.
Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. Hope you liked. And also, do let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about this emulator? And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.